In this video, we'll go over eight awesome new features in Excel you probably didn't know. So let's get into it. First up, in number one, we've got the VStack formula, which allows us to stack multiple tables into one. So you can see over here in this Excel file, which you can download for free in the video description, you can see that we have two stores, one in San Francisco and one in LA, and we would like to compile them together into our total inventory. So for this, we can just use the VStack function. So equals VStack, hit the tab key there, and this is gonna be the first array, this whole area. So control shift down there and control shift right, comma, and then we'll select the second area. Again, control shift down, control shift right. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see now it's merged it into one table. Similar to a V stack, which is for vertical, you can also use an H stack, which is for horizontal. So over here to the side, I could do equals H stack. And then I'm just gonna select the exact same areas to show you quickly here. And this one as well. And basically it's just gonna stack them right next to each other. Obviously here, it's not all that useful. Next up, in number two, we've got the text split, which is fairly self-explanatory. As you can see over here, we have a table with the name, and we wanna split this into the first name and the last name. So we're gonna use the text split function for that, and we'll go equals text split, hit the tab key there. And so this is the text that we're interested in, and the column delimiter here is what we want it to be separated by. So in our case, hit the comma there to activate it, we wanna separate it just by a space sign. So we're just gonna put it in quotations, space, quotations. Then we can simply close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see that we now have split into first and last name. Similarly there, instead of splitting it by column, we could split it by separate rows. So I could do something like equals text split. And this is the same text, comma, and suppose instead of a column delimiter, we want it by row. So we'll hit the comma again. And then here we're gonna do the same thing. So quotations, space, quotations, and close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that it's split it by row instead of by column. Now in number three, what if there's more than two words of text? Then the text before or the text after can come handy. So you can see over here, Suppose that we want to extract the ID number, so this first part, and the price. But we have this EU thing in the middle, which we don't quite want. That's when we might be able to use the text before here for the ID number. So we'll go equals text before. This is the text for us, comma. And again, the separator is going to be the comma there in this case. So we'll put it in quotations, comma, close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and hit enter there. And you can see there it's managed to separate that. Same thing goes with the price. This time it's for text after, hit the tab key. This is a text for us, comma. The delimiter in this case is gonna be an underscore. So we'll put it in quotations again, underscore quotations, close up parenthesis and hit enter. And now to drag this down all across, we can simply select these two and then just drag it down here from the edge all the way to the bottom there. Moving on to number four, and now we've got the image function, which allows us to bring any image from the internet and import it into a specific cell on Excel. So if we look over here, let's suppose that we wanna have the flag of each country. So for that, in this case, let's suppose we wanna fill in France. So we'll go equals image, hit the tab key there. And in here, we wanna try to find the source for the image. So we would have to go to the internet for that let me just open up a browser and you can see here that I've looked up the France flag and I have it right here. All I need to do is right click and go to copy image address. Once I have that, I can go back to the Excel file and then as a source, we need to put it in quotations. Then I'm gonna paste it by hitting control V and then close the quotations and close the parenthesis and just hit enter there. And you can see that I now have the flag of France in there. And what's nice about this method is that it stays within the cell, so you can't easily move it or change the size unless you do the same thing for the row or column. And if you're liking this video and you wanna level up your Excel skills, you can consider checking out our Excel for Business and Finance course. 
And what makes this course different is that it's all applied to the real world, while we still cover theoretical lessons like formatting, formulas, and charts, we also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a dataset and presenting some visual insights. And if you get stuck along the way, you can always ask us, the course instructors, questions in the discussions forum. We also offer several other courses, including Power BI, VBA and Macros, and more. So if you're interested in checking it out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Moving up to number five, and we're still with images, but this time, let's suppose that we've been given an image like this. So it's actually an image of a table. And so it's a bit tedious if we have to go line by line, type it into Excel. But luckily there is a solution here. And for that, we can head over to data. And then under get and transform data, we want to go from picture and picture from file. In this case, I have the image right here. So I'm simply going to hit on insert. You can see that it's going to start loading it over on the side. As you can see here, we can either review the data or we can simply hit on insert. So I'm just going to go to insert anyway. And you can see that just like that, it's been able to add all of the data for us. That said, it does lose the formatting, but it's still better than nothing. Number six, we've got the to call function, which is actually quite similar to the VStack. So let's take a look over here. Let's suppose that we have employees in London and in New York, and we want to put them all together under all staff. So for that, we can go to equals to call, hit the tab key there, and we simply want to select this whole area. So control shift down, control shift right, and just hit on enter. And you can see that it's created the whole list in one column. Similar to the to call, you also have the to row. So let's take a look over here. We'll go equals to row, hit the tab key, and it's gonna be the same area there. Just hit enter. And you can see that this time around, it's all in one row. All right, next up in number seven, we've got the take and the drop functions, which allow us to select specific areas of a table. So if we look over here, you can see that we have the top three brands by unit sold, which is what we want to try to get, and the bottom three brands. And we want to do that from this data set over here, which as you can see is sorted from highest to lowest by unit sold. So to do this for the top three brands, let's go ahead and try the take function. So we'll go equals take, hit the tab key there, and the array is this whole area. So control shift down, control shift right, comma. Then the rows is going to be top three rows. So we're gonna select three, comma. And then for the columns, we want two columns, the brand and the units. So we're just gonna put a two and close a parenthesis and hit enter. So you can see that we have three rows, but they're actually these two columns, B and C, but rather we're interested in D and E. So to change that, we can actually go back inside and instead of starting over here, we can start with a minus two. So it's gonna go from here and just hit enter there. And now it's switched that up to Coca-Cola, which is the brand and the units. Opposite to the take, we have the drop function, which makes sense for finding the bottom three, for example. So over here, you can see that we have a total of 13 rows. And from there, we wanna try to get the bottom three. So it's just gonna be the last three in here. So for that, we're gonna go to equals, drop, hit the top key there. And you can see the syntax is very similar. So we're just gonna select this whole area, control shift down, control shift right, comma. And for the rows this time, we want it to start at row 10 because everything below is going to get dropped, which is what we want to find. So we'll put a 10 in there, comma, and the columns, this time it works the opposite to the take. So we're just gonna put a two instead of a minus two, close up parenthesis and hit enter there. And it's basically saying to drop these three over here, which makes sense as they're the lowest in units sold. Now, I realize that that drop function isn't all that intuitive, so make sure you practice it a bit more to get comfortable. Finally, number eight, we have the expand function, which makes sense when you have a data set that's going to continue to grow in values. So let's take a look at an example so it's a bit clearer. 
you can see over here that we have this raw set of data, which is basically from January all the way to July for some sales figures. And so we also have a summary. This could be in a new tab, for example. And then here we have data from January all the way to December. So it doesn't actually fill everything in here. That said, we can still make it dynamic using the expand function. So we'll go equals expand, hit the top key there, and the array is gonna be this area. So just these first two columns, hit the comma key there. Then for the rows, we want it to go down by 12 rows because we have 12 months of data, comma. And then for the columns, we don't need anything in there. So we're just gonna hit a comma again. And finally, this pad width is whatever we want to put if there is no value. So it would be nice to have something like an NA sign. Just gonna put it in quotations in there. Close that and hit enter. And you can see that now it's gone ahead and added all the values, except that from August to December, where there are none, it's stayed as an NA. Then from here, suppose that we do get August figures because they get updated and we add 500 and 500 in here, you can see that that's going to update dynamically for us. The reason for this is because one, this is a table. Now to make something a table, you would just have to hit on control T. From there, it's all gonna update dynamically because of the expand function. For more on Excel, check out this video over here to learn how to make an awesome dashboard or this link over here to take our Excel course. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.